Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, thank you very much for taking the time to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. Now to get everyone up to speed with what's going on with the Order of the Thorn, we have a bunch of quests. Quest number one, find the queen, so we can complete the king's challenge, which just so happens to be the subtitle of this game, so it's a pretty big deal. Quest number two, get back our daddy's magic song book that was stolen by some pixies. Quest number three, find some harps in a swamp for the pixies that stole our magic daddy book. And quest number four, find some treasure for a troll. And lo and behold, we're outside of the entrance to the swamp now. So perhaps we can satisfy the demands of the pixies before you know it. My god, I never thought I'd say a sentence like that in my life. Hey, why are you ripping out my bamboo? I just transplanted that from deep in the swamp last week. I'm so sorry, Turtle. I didn't realize. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. It's not going back in the ground now. Now come on, Flynn. Don't upset the turtle wearing the monocle. After all, that turtle's this close to becoming a very classy son of a gun. We just need to find him a top hat. Ooh, maybe that'll be our fifth quest. I'm sorry, again. Yeah, yeah. It's raining fish. Oh, yes, it's raining fish. That's because you're stealing them all with your blasted net. We've all got to feed our families, Turtle. <laughs> the only thing you feed is your moonshine addiction. Well, aren't you just a class act, Mr. Turtle? Calling out that Gordon fisherman-looking dude for being an alcoholic and in front of a complete stranger? Speaking of alcoholics, there's a beer in front of me now, so I don't mind if I do. Oh yeah, let's get back to the game. Tripling alcoholism aside, these two fishermen friends right here are guarding the entrance to the swamp, and they won't let us in. Ted and I have agreed not to allow people into the swamp. Stay out of there. It's for your own safety. Okay, sorry. And that's right, a monocle-wearing turtle and Ted the Fisherman won't allow our hero to progress into the swamp. It's not that they're doing anything to stop us, really, but our hero respects authority, and they say, no, you can't go here. So we're like, oh, okay, we won't go into the swamp. I'm sorry, Mr. Turtle and Fisherman. No, 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 you don't need to get up and physically stop me. I'll just listen to you, because, you know, I respect my elders. But nevertheless, we do have legitimate business in the swamp. After all, we need to get those harps for those damn pixies. So an arrangement can be made with Ted the Fisherman. And yes, I still can't believe his name's Ted the Fisherman. That's just fantastic. So basically, Ted the Fisherman's in love with a girl who works in the potion shop in the main town. So naturally, we gotta hook these people up. So Ted's like, yeah, you go ahead and play matchmaker, and then I'll let you into the swamp, because, you know, I guess one good turn deserves another. Although I feel like he's getting a better end of the deal here. Really, we could just run to the swamp. It's not like these guys are going to chase after us. They seem really invested in fishing, and we're helping this man get hooked up with the love of his life, so, yeah. Ted's coming out really ahead here. But anyway, this is a multi-step quest. We need to find some roses. We need to sing a song to her. And, well, okay, that's a two-step process. And I guess tell her that Ted loves her. So maybe kind of like three steps. So now we got a grand total of, oh gosh, gotta do the queen thing. Gotta get daddy's book back. Gotta go ahead and get the pixies a harp. Gotta do the troll. Five quests now. Man, we are a busy man. Oh yeah, and we learned a new song. Play free bird! Sorry, sorry, I had to put that joke in here at some point. Oh god, what am I wearing? Aye. Lovely song, young bard, lovely song! So we got a lot to do. I suppose I could have beelined it straight to the potion shop, lady. But instead, I found death. Or that guy from the Greek religion mythology. What's his name? Ah, there's a Wikipedia page about it. You can Google it yourself. So naturally, I had to talk to him. Ahoy there. Could I trouble you for a fairy ride? You see a creepy man who looks like Death Incarnate, hero, and you say, Ahoy there. I mean, I think we should show a little bit more respect to this guy. Just listen to how he talks. I am bound by the highest powers to charge a single gold coin. No more, no less. Yeah, bound by the highest powers to charge a single gold coin. Well, good thing we have a single gold coin on us. And I'm gonna give it to this dude because, well... I found a solution to a puzzle here. Already got the gold coin. Guy wants it. Obviously, this is going to lead to somewhere important, right? Ah. 
I shall wait here for your return. Thank you. You notice a cloak hanging on the pole. Is this your cloak, Ferryman? No. It was left by a knight long ago. You may take it if you wish. Thank you. It may come in useful. Whew. That was wonderful. Sorry, I had to leave so much raw footage in there because that's a pretty awesome soundtrack. Feels all spooky and very 80s, like Labyrinth. I'm just waiting for David Bowie's cod piece to come out. But we did pick up a very important item here. And in fact, it's the only reason to come to this island. Yeah, that cloak. That's it. That is absolutely the only item of any importance here. Unless you're into Steam achievements. Because if you are, guess what? There's a graveyard here. And you can look at all the tombstones and find a bunch of Easter eggs and references. But yeah... That's it for this island. That is all we need. We need not ever come back here again. And in fact, we can't. Because, you know, one gold coin, we already spent it. So now that we're broke as a joke and back on the mainland, we can explore the map some more and run across some random encounters that advance the plot. And the queen is obviously past here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be guarding this place. Now let me pass. You see one guard shrug slightly to the other. That Abdon, he's always been an arrogant fool. He'll certainly never find the Queen that way. He's heading in absolutely the wrong direction. Oh, quiet now. Here's another challenger. And guess what? The game's not lying there. He is headed in absolutely the wrong way. So anywho, we can chit chat with the guards for a while and learn more about the game world, the lore, and some other interesting fun little references that adventure game fans should get. Especially if you were alive in the 90s. What can you tell me about the troll? Oh, all right. Grumpy, greedy old thing. Copper or tin for that way to shins. Uh, what does that even mean? He likes treasure. Who doesn't? Sheesh. He hates goats, though. Hides them. He hates that in particular. That one, is there like a goat behind me that I'm not noticing? This goat knocked him on his keister once. He fell in the water after that. Uh, or the king's goat, too. Why were you, old fellow? <laughs> yeah, that was a mean old goat. He wandered off one day, and he ain't been back since. Well, it sounds like somebody's played Simon the Sorcerer before. Well, that was perfectly pleasant. Now let's wander around these lush green wastes until we encounter something interesting. Like, say, those twin best friend girls who aren't twins but are kind of creepy nevertheless and have a thing for that poor gnome. Oh no! Our little gnome friend is stuck! Don't worry, I will help him! Well, he doesn't appear to be asking for help. I mean, for all we know, this is an ancient gnomish ritual. Maybe he meant to get his beard stuck in the branch because, well, who are we to judge gnomish culture? No! Stay away! I don't need your help! Yeah, I'm sure there'll be no repercussions for cutting a gnome's beard. After all, his character portrait still looks the same. I told you not to do that! We set you free. You can't stay stuck to a tree all day. I most certainly can if it lets me keep me beard. I'd rather have waited until the tree out of the way than cut it off. Oh, my poor beard. But you were all tussled up. We just had to help. Tussled up? I ain't never been tussled up in my life. It almost seems like these ladies are trying to provoke him. Because didn't he say in the first encounter that gnomes don't get tussled up? Like, maybe that's like a really bad word in the gnome community. Like, you don't say tussled up to a gnome. That's their word, lady. Anyway, as you would expect, the gnome once again requests that the ladies not follow him around because he's pretty cheesed off. And what do you think they do? What do you think these two saccharine sweet ladies do? Come, let's not waste our time here anymore. Oh, Finn, how nice to see you again. Hello, ladies. It's very nice of you to be trying to help the gnome out like you have been. Oh, no, Finn. It's just the right thing to do. I'm still a bit worried about our little sir. Maybe we should go check on him. He might get lost or trapped again. He did seem very upset and out of sorts. If we can ever help you out, Finn, please let us know. We love helping people. That's why we're taking part in the King's Challenge, you know? Yeah, this is kind of making me a little uncomfortable. We love to help you. We ought to help you, Flynn. <laughs> Again, you just give this girl a creepy voice and you got yourself a scary horror villain. Our wish is going to be that the king grants every person in the realm a wish. That's very noble of you, ladies. 
Well, okay, that's actually a pretty good wish. We should, like, steal that wish. Could we? My wish is that everyone, including myself, gets a wish. There we go. We seem altruistic, and we still get our wish. Okay, maybe I misjudged these ladies. They might be onto something here. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think they're actually the only characters in this game that actually mention what their wish is going to be. Hell, we don't even know what Flynn's wish is going to be. But nevertheless, we still got to play matchmaker because, well, we need to get to the swamp. So let's go hook Ted up. Or try to, anyway. It, this is kind of awkward to say, but I just met Ted. Ted! He's such a lovely gentleman. So polite. He listens to me so intently. And he's so distinguished. I'm glad to hear you say that. He told me that... Uh, that he is madly in love with you. He did? Well, what could he see in a humble potion maker like me? Are fishermen the social elite in Fairyland? Do they just value fishermen so highly that this lady who makes magical potions for a living is like, Oh no, what would a fisherman, a guy who fishes all day, see in someone like me who makes magic? Oh, I don't know. Maybe like magic shop workers are like the retail workers and the fishermen are like the stock traders in this fairy kingdom. So it sounds like we're pulling a pretty woman here. Why don't you ask him yourself? I just wanted to pass on the message, that's all. Oh, I couldn't do that. It's not that I don't believe you, but I really would want to be completely certain of his feelings before I said anything to him. Of course, he's a sexy, smart potion maker with confidence issues, so yeah, we gotta satisfy the quest goals and still find that damn rose and play her the song. I suppose we could play the song now, but it still wouldn't complete the quest because we don't got no damn roses. And don't you think any of these random pretty flowers we see lying around will do the trick? They won't. One, you can't pick them up, and two, they're not roses. Apparently roses only exist in one part of the fairy kingdom, and guess what? The trolls block in the way. So that means it's really important we find some damn treasure around here. Where the hell are we gonna find treasure? I don't know, maybe if we kick back and play some jams for these people, maybe, just maybe, by chance, we'll learn something about some treasure. Because, you know, random strangers that you serenade with music often know about treasure in real life. Yeah, it's about as convoluted and adventure gamey as it gets. Such a nice... Thank you for the song, Miss. You play. Well, that's just wonderful. These fine people whose dialogue I'm inadvertently skipping through apparently know where the gnome's treasure is. It was in that tree that he was stuck in. So perhaps we should go back to that tree and take some treasure. Wink, wink. I'm winking at you, but you can't see me. I could. No, I'm not going to animate myself winking. That'd be creepy. Oh no, look behind you, hero. The gnome with the cut off beard that's not really cut off is headed right towards you. What do you think you're up to, lad? I'm sorry, Mr. Gnome. I didn't realize this was yours. Oh, beneath this happy-go-lucky smiley exterior is a liar. You knew damn well that that was his treasure. It's too late for apologies, laddie. You don't steal a gnome's property and get away with it. Even if I stole it first, it's still mine now. Now, why would you tell us that, gnome? Do you really want to establish yourself as the villain? Yeah, I stole something. What of it? I won't let you steal something I stole. I'm a badass gnome. I'm gonna cut you good and feed you to the worms! Oh well, we're gonna get stabbed. Huh. So much for this hero's journey. Make your peace with whatever god you worship, you spoony bard! Wait a minute there, little sir. Hurrah, the Calvary's arrived and they're gonna save our hero's butt. Ugh, not you two again! Little sir, we've found the most exciting thing! A great mound of treasure! Yes, indeed. And we said to ourselves, which of our friends would like this treasure the most? And we thought our little sir would. Treasure? Show me where right now! Just follow me, little sir. And you, Bard, stay away from my treasure. I mean, tree. Well, that was awfully nice of them to de-escalate that situation. Thank you for saving me. I really think he was going to kill me. The pleasure is all ours, Finn. I'm glad you're okay. Although, I don't think our little sir would have hurt you. Not really. He would have just avoided stabbing all your vital organs. But yeah, you would have bled a little bit. Because, you know, trying to steal his stuff. I mean, you can't do that to a gnome. If you say so, I'm not so sure. Oh, he comes across mean and nasty. But there's a good heart hidden in there. Rosie and I will find it, I promise. 
But for now, you'd better leave before he realizes we've deceived him. Yeah, it's always a good idea to deceive the stab happen gnome. I can't see this going bad. I can't see this ending badly at all. Well, on that note, so when's this part of my over-analysis of Order of the Thorn? Part 3? Well, this was part 3. Part 4 will be up very shortly. As in probably, well, it's almost midnight. Yeah, probably some point, well, today, but, you know, I have to sleep. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.